The first thing I'm going to do in order to use Redis with SignalR is actually get an instance of Redis running on my local machine. So the simplest way to do that is using Docker. If you're unfamiliar with Docker, don't worry. This is just for demo purposes so I can show you how to actually set up and use Redis. So if you're familiar with Docker, I'm just pulling down the latest image and I'm just going to create um, a new container here. So we're going to map the relevant ports, which Redis runs on 6379. And I'm just going to call this container Redis. All right, so we can see that it's actually running now. Great. So the first thing we actually need to do is for our project is get the latest NuGet package. So you can get that from NuGet. And like I said, it is called Microsoft.ASP.NetCore.SignalR and .Redis. And because I haven't been specifying any versions, um, like I said, you'll be using the, the, the most up-to-date version that's available when you're watching this. As of right now, it's 1.0.3. So we will restore that once this finishes. All right, so now what we can do is jump over to our startup and configure SignalR to actually use Redis. So now there's this extension method called add Redis. And what we can do here is specify some options. There's a bunch of different overloads. Um, for the demo, what I'm going to do is just specify options. And what I want to do is I'm going to show you um, in the configuration how you can specify the client name. So there's a bunch of different configuration options related to endpoints. Um, by default, it's just going to use localhost. But I want to use client name so I can show you uh, within Redis that we're actually connecting for SignalR. So I'm going to set the client name to SignalR. Let's give this a run. And it's going to open up Chrome again here. All right, let's close this one. Let's go over to HTTP. All right, so if I send a message to everybody, and now if I jump over back to PowerShell here, and I connect to our Redis instance, just so I can show you that we're actually connected to it. So we'll go into bash. And then if I use the Redis CLI, I can do a client list. And there you can see the first two entries with ID five and six are called SignalR. And that's our web app running. It really is that easy to use Redis with SignalR for scaling. It's simply a matter of configuration in the startup. However, there is one caveat you need to be aware of. If you're using anything other than WebSockets, meaning you're using server sent events or long polling, you need to configure your load balancer to support sticky sessions. Sticky sessions allow the client to connect to the same server behind the load balancer each time it makes a request. Meaning if client A connects and hits the instance number one, if it makes another request, the load balancer will send it to instance number one again. You'll have to refer to the documentation on whatever load balancer you're using. If you're using AWS's Elastic Load Balancer, you can enable sticky sessions. Or if you're using Azure's Load Balancer, you can easily set up the source IP affinity mode. As you can see, using Redis with SignalR is pretty straightforward. It's just a matter of configuration and making sure that you have your load balancer configured properly.